Hi, I'm Samantha. Welcome to my channel. I'm currently 20 weeks pregnant, but back when I was just starting to take pregnancy tests, I was looking up a lot of early pregnancy symptoms and I found a lot of videos on YouTube. So I figured that I would share my experience. <laughs> I think in that time what I really learned was a lot of women have symptoms that can be seen as early pregnancy symptoms, but they just have those symptoms just all the time at regular points in their cycle. And then I think when you're specifically looking for certain symptoms, it just kind of exaggerates the symptoms that you would normally otherwise just be feeling. If you don't know, I had breast cancer and so I was on a lot of medications before I started trying to get pregnant. Um, these medications blocked my estrogen and that's just because that was one of the hormones that my cancer used to grow and it shut down my ovaries completely so I wasn't ovulating or having regular cycles or anything like that. After I stopped my medication, I had my first period in December, and so I had one December, January, February, and March, and then I got pregnant. All of the cycles were between 30 and 32 days, so I had a pretty good idea of when my period would be showing up. I feel like I was pretty aware of my regular PMS symptoms in that amount of time just because I wasn't really used to having regular hormones or having periods or anything like that. So the symptoms I was just kind of like, oh yeah, I forgot that like I have all these symptoms. And so I was pretty aware of them. So I would say that if you're trying to get pregnant and you want to know if your symptoms are just regular PMS symptoms or early pregnancy symptoms, I just keep a journal of the symptoms that you normally feel on a regular basis just throughout your regular cycle. And so you can compare that with your symptoms from the previous months and you can say, oh, like those look a little unusual, maybe I'm pregnant. So I'm gonna go like day by day and kind of go through the symptoms that I regularly felt during a regular cycle and the symptoms that I felt the time that I got pregnant. So I'm gonna start like right at ovulation. One thing that I noticed around ovulation is that I was hungrier than normal and this happened every single time. Around that time I tended to crave things that were higher in protein, which is like not something that is like my favorite thing to eat, but I do obviously because <laughs> I need it. Another thing is that I did get an increase in cervical mucus around ovulation. Um, that is a little TMI, but it is a very biological thing apparently that um, around ovulation that happens because that certain type of mucus makes it easier for the sperm to swim and get to the egg. One thing that I did notice is the time that I actually did get pregnant, there was a lot more discharge than normal. So maybe I was more fertile that month than I had been the previous months. I don't really take that much into consideration just because I was coming off all those hormone medications and my body was starting to get back to normal and stuff. So maybe I just really wasn't able to get pregnant those other months and this would have been like the first month that it would have worked well. I don't, I don't know. Obviously there's no way to know, but that it was something that I noticed um, the time that I did get pregnant. I'd also always feel pain in one of my ovaries around ovulation, which some people say can be your ovary releasing the egg. This time it was my left side when I was pregnant but I don't know if that matters to anybody. <laughs> I also tended to be warmer around ovulation and um, became a little bit more dizzy, so like I needed to drink more water and make sure I was hydrated. So pretty much right after ovulation ended, I didn't really have very many symptoms at all, and that pretty much happened every month. The cycle that I got pregnant, I'm estimating that I ovulated around April 1st. Um, that's just based on the regular length of my cycles, and also I was doing the ovulation test strip things, so based on like when that was high and when around that time you typically ovulate, um, that's when I think it happened. <laughs> Days one, two, and three after ovulation basically felt absolutely nothing, didn't feel anything different at all. <laughs> Day four past ovulation, I noticed that my nipples were pretty sensitive. This was pretty normal, so I didn't think much of that. Day five past ovulation, I noted that I also had sensitive nipples and I was constipated. Being constipated wasn't normal for me. I'm not sure if that's super relevant because you never know what could have happened to make you constipated, like what you ate or what happened with your body, but um, that is a pregnancy symptom, so I thought I'd include it. <laughs> On day six past ovulation, I noticed these stabbing pains in my uterus on my way to work in the morning. I was just driving in my car and I just felt these stabbing pains. And it happened for a little while and then it went away and I didn't feel it the rest of the day, but it was enough to where I was like, what the heck? That was such a weird feeling. 
and that was something that I hadn't experienced before. Don't know if that has to do with anything. Another thing that I wrote down is that I had sore breasts and also sensitive nipples. The sensitive nipples thing was not unusual, but my breasts being that sore was pretty unusual. The breasts don't usually get that sore. Day seven, I didn't really notice much more. I still had sore breasts, um, still wasn't really normal, but yeah, not, not no new symptoms that day. Day eight, I wrote down that I was super angry and that's actually a really normal symptom around that time. <laughs> around before my period, I would just start to get like irritated easily. Um, I also had acne, which wasn't very normal. Basically, since uh, I started cancer treatment, I haven't really had much acne. So getting acne was a little unusual for me. So on day nine past ovulation, I have this in my video of finding out that I was pregnant, but um, basically I just had really bad cramps. Um, I was actually just like on the floor of the bathroom for a little while because they hurt so bad. And that was just not really normal. My cramps are not usually that bad. I took a pregnancy test that day. It was a really cheap test from Amazon and there was like such a faint line on it that I didn't even know if I was just seeing things or if there was an actual line. So I didn't really count that as my day of finding out that I was pregnant. <laughs> um, so I just wasn't sure. Day 10 was the day that I took a pregnancy test again. I took one of the more expensive tests. I took a first response uh, just a regular one and a first response digital and they both are supposed to be able to tell you six days before your missed period and they both were very positive and um, so I didn't write down any symptoms that day I was probably just like super excited so sorry about that so I had that positive test but my period wasn't really expected for another four or five days so I'm just gonna keep going um, until I get to the day that I miss my period and keep telling you the symptoms I was experiencing okay so day 11 12 and 13 Basically all of these days I noticed that I had very sore breasts and it was just getting worse and worse. I started wearing a bra when I went to sleep at night, which was very unusual for me because I never did that. But um, I would just wake up in the morning and they would just hurt so bad. <laughs> um, I needed that support overnight. I also had some mild cramping, which isn't really a normal symptom for me. I know some people can start to cramp before their period, but I don't usually start to cramp until the day of my period or um, the day after, or sometimes the just the day before, but like it doesn't usually happen this far in advance, so that was a little unusual for me. I noted that I would get irritated super easily again, um, so I had to like try to <laughs> calm myself down and not get mad at everyone for no reason. And I had a little bit of nausea, but it didn't bother me too much because I was I was really used to being on cancer medications and the nausea from that was so much worse that this nausea was not really affecting me too much. And I think that the nausea was really coming from me just being hungry. It felt like I needed to eat a lot, which was a super weird symptom for me. I don't usually eat that much. And, um, I just needed to keep something in my stomach like all the time. The thing that was super weird was that I would wake up in the morning and I would just be starving. I'm not normally a person who eats breakfast. I love breakfast and I love breakfast food, but I have never woken up in the morning and just been starving. Basically, I was craving like a full on breakfast every morning, which was just so weird for me. On day 14 past ovulation, I noted that I had all the same symptoms, but I was feeling a little bit better that day. And I think it was because that morning uh, Gray woke up and he made a big full on breakfast with like eggs and bacon. And you know, all the other days I was eating breakfast, but it wasn't like all of that protein, which I was really craving in the mornings. And so I think the rest of the day, I just kind of felt a lot better. It felt like my stomach was settled. Also, I don't really like eggs, but I craved eggs like a ton. And I have continued to crave eggs throughout my pregnancy, which is just, not normal at all. <laughs> On day 15, I wrote that I had been eating way more than normal, but I hadn't gained any weight. Um, and so I just felt like I was hungry all the time, but I would eat food and then I would not, I would feel full. So I would take these peanut butter crackers with me in the morning um, and eat them on my way to work. And I would get through half of the pack of them before I was like, ugh, I don't really feel like eating more. And then I would save them and then like an hour later I'd be starving again and then I would eat the other three crackers and then I would feel full again. 
So it was like, I needed to eat very frequently, um, but I couldn't eat a lot. And if I didn't do that, I just kind of felt nauseous and sick. And then my breasts were still very sore. That lasted for a really long time. They're still sore now, but not as bad as they were in the first trimester. <laughs> okay, so then by that day, I should have had my period. So that's basically all the symptoms that I had up until my missed period. The weirdest things for me were just the appetite thing um, and the sore breasts. Those were like the biggest symptoms that I was just like, whoa, like that does not normally happen. And I had that little bit of nausea, which was unusual, but it wasn't really that bad. So I might have not noticed if it, if I wasn't looking for it. Um, but I definitely would have noticed the needing to eat more frequently and like, yeah, feeling full after I felt like I needed to eat more frequently. <laughs> I plan on making a first trimester recap video where I explain all my symptoms that I had in the first trimester because I wrote them all down. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see any more pregnancy related content or cancer related content and subscribe if you want to support me or if you want to see more videos. And yeah, that's all. Bye.